Welcome to the Women Leaders Association podcast, where we believe we go further, faster, and have more fun when we go together. Be sure to tune in each week to hear an empowering message from the world's top women executives, trailblazers, entrepreneurs, and all around fierce female leaders. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland, and I will be taking you on a deep dive of each message to equip you with the principles, strategies, and tools you need to start crushing your goals, increasing your impact, creating work-life harmony. And did I mention have more fun? Because when you love what you do, you do it better. The Women Leaders Association is the world's largest women executives association with over 30,000 women in executive and leadership positions who are committed to the development and advancement of women in the corporate arena. If you would like to get involved in a Women Leaders Association chapter, would enjoy daily podcasts, or you desire to become a part of the Women's Mastermind Group near you, simply go to womenleaderspodcast.com. Now let's tune in for this incredible message. On today's episode, hear from Crystal Huey, the owner and director of Corporate Cleaning. Hear her incredible story as she shares resilience and passion and true integrity. Hey, hey, welcome back to the Women Leaders. I'm your host, Julian Kirkland, and I'm so excited Crystal's with us today. Welcome, Crystal. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. I am so excited you're here. And so right before we hit record, you know, we're chatting about life and and all the ups and downs. And we are recording shortly after that Hurricane Helene came through. Um, And so, you know, just our our prayers and best wishes go out to everybody who is listening to that and was affected in any way. Um, We know how those uncertain times can cause so much uncertainty within us. And so we are just here for you. This podcast is here for you. This episode is here for you. Um, Because Crystal, just in the few moments that we were talking you have a light about you and you have an energy about you that just exudes gratitude. You are grateful from where you came from. You're grateful for where you're going. You are grateful for those who are in your life currently and who um, are in your business currently. And so let's talk about like, let's just get into it about how when you started this business, you knew that it was going to be a together business. Well, for me, you know, I just, again, want to thank you for allowing us to be here because I represent my team as well. And, you know, our hearts and prayers go out to the families and we have some people down south. So we just have been praying and uh, keeping them safe and making sure if there's anything we can do, we want to help them. Um, For us personally, we love to have uh, it's kind of like our 15 words that describe ourselves or 10 to 15 words. And we've encouraged our team to do that. And then it's kind of our core value our individual core value and everything in our life kind of matches up to that. So uh, one of my uh, one of my sayings that I say about myself is that I'm a fearless inter- innovator who spreads the love of Christ one smile at a time. You know, mm-hmm. I'm your uh, energetic cheerleader. I love to just meet people and figure out what can I do to help you reach your dream or what can I do to share a smile and change your day. And so that's kind of part of what we believe and we walk in. And even when I started this business, I thought I just wanted a place where um, I love to clean. It makes me happy. That is not everyone's story. (laughs) But uh, (laughs) I had uh, worked for a friend. I was um, in corporate America, working a lot of hours back then in 1996, 97. Flex time wasn't really a thing. So I needed a place where I could flex my schedule to be our son's room mom and Cub Scout leader, you know, the den mom and all these things. And so I went to work for a friend and a really nice guy, but it, it's, it, it wasn't quite optimal for what I was looking for. And so I thought, what the heck, I'll start my own business. And I went to the local library, read some books on marketing. I went to, back then it was just Kinko's and made some brochures up. I have totally forgotten about Kinko's. Oh my gosh. It was was Kinko's. And then I started calling people up going, hey, um, you know, how can I help you with your cleaning needs? And we got our first contract and kind of went from there. And um, my husband joined in the business full time about three years in, which creates a different dynamic. And uh, I, I didn't miss anything of my son's from that point forward until about middle school. And then he was way too cool for us to be at stuff. We were there anyway, right. uh, but way too cool. And nowadays I have the amazing, amazing pleasure of having that flexible schedule for our grandson who is four. Oh, wow. 
And and talk a little bit about that. Um, you said, you know, it brought in a different dynamic. And I know so many people listening um, perhaps are in that same situation where they're like, or, or they are, you know, considering being in that same situation. And they're like, gosh, I, that's a lot. That's a lot of time with my husband or with my family. You know, a lot of times families go into business together or they're taking over the family business. So talk a little bit about what that was like for you in that adapting phase that happened. So it was a very interesting dynamic in the beginning. And uh, people should understand that when you're running a business, your needs and your primary focus is going to change over time. So originally, I just needed to make enough income to cover some bills and things like that, um, some, I don't know, summer camps for our kid, that kind of thing. And then um, I ran the business by myself, CEO, founder for the first two years. My husband was running a Blockbusters video. <laughs> wow, another blast from the past. Blast <laughs> from the past, uh, back then, working 70, 75 hours. And uh, after that second year, our account was like, uh, uh, dude, whatever this corporate cleaning is thing that she's doing, you need to get on that because the amount of hours that you're putting on, your salary is equating mm -hmm. to less than minimum wage. So we took about a year. My husband um, retired from retired from there and came to work full time in the business. And interestingly enough, the customers that I had worked so hard to build in that dynamic I created uh, immediately shifted when he came on board. People who had only had my number and had only spoken with me were like, oh, she's here. And they just whoosh, went right over. And I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> How dare they? And it was in my husband. He's really awesome. He's a great leader. He's inspirational. He knows how to get things done. However, we have completely different styles. Mm -hmm. We can say the same thing in completely different ways. For instance, if I say, hmm, I don't have anything to wear, you know, tomorrow to a birthday party. I'm thinking, got to go shopping, get on Amazon, whatever it is, I need something new. If my husband says that, he's like, look, one of us needs to throw some stuff in the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't discover this until we've been married like 15, 16, 17 years. Wow. So it can be a completely different understanding based on that person's perception. And so when my husband came in and the customers just went like this, Oh, it was aggravating. Mm -hmm. Now, me and my husband, we really are the best of friends. And he and I, if I'm working under him, which I have done, seamless, flawless, we have no issues. But him working under me, we're both outlets. So mm -hmm. that created a different dynamic. And I'd be like, dude, didn't I say ABC? He's like, uh, I heard 7XY, <laughs> 227. <laughs> And so it was it was frustrating. I used to get really upset about that because I thought I built this and I'm perfectly capable, but it chipped away at my self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And then I said, fine, you can be in charge, but he did things differently. And so we were constantly doing this. Yeah. And after a while, several years, I left for a while and was um, an IT tech for a major hospital around here for about five years and learned a lot of project management things and eventually came back to the business. And we still kind of bumped heads. Where we're at now is it's more of a partnership, but we had to define what that was because yeah. when I first came back, it was an 80-20 partnership where yeah. everything ran through my husband. And so we really had to sit down, talk, communicate, figure out where are our skills best used and how can we best move forward in an equitable way. And yeah. in 2017, I read the book Traction by Gina Whitman changed everything. We finally had a, a way to communicate where we both could have our say, we could come together with our team and our employees, our leadership team and our employees and move forward in the same dynamic because that didn't happen before. And mm -hmm. I was, and I realized that, you know what, I am the boss. So it doesn't matter if people walk and see us and go, oh, honey, now what do you do for the mm -hmm. business? Nowadays, it used to make me mad. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I'm not faced because you know what? I am who I am. I'm mm -hmm. repping what I'm repping. I'm bringing what I bring. Yeah. And I'm very well skilled to do the job that God's given me to do. So you can say I am. You can recognize or not that I'm CEO. I'm good with it because I am who I am. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I love that, you know, it it took that one willingness to go outside of yourself, right, to figure out 
what what is it right because so often when we are working with even if it's a, a best friend it doesn't have to be you know that that uh spouse or sister or whatever if it's just anybody in close relationship there is that heated energy that happens right <laughs> and really when we have high emotion we have low intelligence and so we are flying off the handle and and things are being said that really we wouldn't say if we were thinking clearly and so you know i love the fact that you had to kind of go outside of yourself and say okay wait i recognize that we have to be able to communicate i can't have hold expectations of you that one i'm not communicating to you one that are totally unreasonable you know like you had to go through and think okay we have to find a way that we can come together and communicate where we're going to move not only ourselves, but our company and our clients and everybody who is under our influence forward in a positive way. And I think that speaks volumes to both you and your husband's character, because so often companies, when they are at scale, right? And y'all are growing and, and when they get to that scale point, character and communication are the two things that are going to allow you to scale or cause you to fail. Absolutely. Absolutely. And last year we had the pleasure of, we won a grant to do some VR immersive training with our team. So um, a company called Jobs for the Future, JFF, partnered with a software company called Tailspin. So we were able to put our team into VR headsets and Tailspin is this really cool uh, software where you go in the headset and you interact with um, our AI, you know, artificial people. And let me tell you, some of those people had attitude <laughs> and you learn different training. The sessions were 10, 15 minutes long and you'd learn about managing frustrations, mm -hmm. uh, communicating clearly, actively listening, um, just how to manage my own personal emotions those kinds of things. And it was fun to watch, you know, the team would put on the headsets. And from what I understand, I suck my teeth a lot yeah. when I'm frustrated. So I was in there talking to the virtual person like, <laughs> now, you know, my eyebrows, I guess, were up here above the headset. Oh my God. And um, the, they pose a question if you're actively listening and you're talking to this computer generated person who looks real and they're kind of coming at you with, different um, objectives or uh, different um, problems. Yeah. And then they'll give you like, there's three things that you can say back to them and you're trying to problem solve through the solution. And that really helped us again, see that a lot of times we're, we're very different in how we're interpreting information, but what is the, what is the underlying goal? What is the objective? A lot of times it's not personal when we find, you know, if it's my husband or one of my siblings or cousins or the different people who work with us. Yeah. It's not always personal. That person may have a lot going on in the background. So I need to take them, take a moment and think, okay, what all could be going on with them? Let me ask some more questions, not just get all in my feelings about it. Let me figure out what the, what the real problem is. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. And so you know, when you came out of that training, what were some of the things that your team was able to move forward with? We understood first and foremost, there were a lot of microaggressions going on that we had no idea about. So when my husband and I were, when we talked to the team and he's out in the field every day, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> um, so I normally would just see the team during our special fun activities or meetings. And the way people acted around us was not the way they acted without us. And so we really had to establish better communication. So now they have daily huddles. There's more touch bases. We ask more open-ended questions anonymously so that we can kind of get some feedback about what was going on. Um, sometimes people didn't realize they had a microaggression or a particular bias on, oh, well, those millennials are always doing this. Mm. Well, you cannot group a whole, you can't categorize a whole group of people, right. you know, or the old people just want... Granted, sometimes older people in new technology, it's not always, yeah. not always a good mix, but we're trying. Yeah. So we really had to have better understanding. And we we started to facilitate, let's do some role play, some wordsmithing. Let's problem solve together as a team because there was just a lot of assumptions and accusations 
that were flying around in the background without our team actually verbalizing what was going on. And what we found is the majority of the time, 98%, they it wasn't what they thought. The person was having a rough day because you know, somebody cut them off in traffic or they had some personal issues they were dealing with. Mm -hmm. So I think our team as a whole is more conscientious of, it's not always about them. The person might just be going through something. And with our customers, it's not always about you. Sometimes the customers are going through something, cut them some slack. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, this is so good. And again, it, it transcends any in all industries. You know, it is about communication and connection with people. And when we can truly see people, it's limitless of what we can accomplish for ourselves and for others, you know? So I love that y'all are so intentional about instilling that in your business and with your people. That's incredible. So Crystal, what would be one last piece of advice for the person that is listening right now? And they are just like, oh yeah, no, I've been through it. Yeah. I know exactly what she's talking about. Yeah. 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 What would be that if she doesn't have access to, you know, the virtual trainings and all of that, what would be just something that she can uh, practice within herself to kind of help shift that perspective that she had been holding? Um, well, the Lord gave this to me about 10 years ago, and it's called HUSH, and it's an acronym. So what it says is, first, just hush, be quiet, take a knee. What is the person really trying to communicate, especially if you're working with your spouse or family members, to understand what is the question really, or what's the problem? Where, where are we trying to get to? As strategize, you know, can we make a plan? What are our right next steps? And H, let's just have a hallelujah praise moment and be thankful for the different things we have. Instead of saying, I have to, I have to, let's try it. Oh, I get to do this. Yeah. So I would just say to have a different understanding and know that more than likely that person's pulling for you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And that was one of my biggest um, perspective shifts is taking that I have to, to, I get to. Um and it, it still catches me off guard every now and then, especially when it comes to running kiddos around. Um, but it, it, like I, at the end of the day, I, I get to, I am so grateful that I get to be the one that picks them up from practice and takes them over here. And, and because the conversations and those little moments, um, I wouldn't be able to get those back, you know, or create those in any other atmosphere. So I am so grateful that I get to yes. do those things that at the time can seem hard or you know inconvenient and all of those things yes yes awesome crystal thank you so much this has been such a great conversation so how can people connect with you where do you hang out so we are online at www.corporatecleaning.us we're on linkedin facebook instagram and then there's also a second business easy to clean.org which shows other entrepreneurs how to create their own commercial cleaning business. It gives webinars and steps on plan, process, purpose, pricing, and products. Oh, I love that. That is awesome. Crystal, thank you so much. All right. That is all we have for you today. Remember, ladies, if you are looking for more connection, be sure to head over to womenleaderspodcast.com.